a bad trend. That means they're headed in the wrong direction. Now, if you don't believe in the case count, because different states test at different levels, then let's look at the hospitalizations, which you cannot argue with because that is a fact. People in the hospital because they have the virus. Right now, seven states are reporting new all-time highs of hospitalizations. All-time highs, that means higher than two months ago. Arizona, Arkansas, California, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Texas. Arizona had to again cancel uh, elective surgeries and non-critical procedures last week to make room in the hospitals for the extra surge in COVID patients. In two weeks, Texas saw a doubling in its hospitalizations. They went from, in, a, in a, just about a two-week period, they went from 1,800 hospitalizations to over 3,000, 3,200. That started on June 5th. Leading into June 5th, the week right before June 5th, Texas looked like it was in a plateau. Plateau in, ho in the hospitalizations, things look good. Now the governor in Texas is back out there asking people to stay at home. Home is the safest place to be. In three weeks, Arizona saw a doubling of the number of people in its hospitals, from about 1,100 people in the hospital to over 2,200 people in the hospital. Same thing, before that, plateaus in Arizona. So why am I saying this? This can change quickly. These states were in a plateau, and within a matter of weeks, they are seeing their hospitals filled with COVID patients. I don't want that to be us. I don't want to be back up here at this podium telling you the safest place to be is in your home. And there's no reason we should have to do that if we follow the rules. But if we get complacent, if we think we know better, if we want to deny the facts, if we want to try to outrun the virus, which isn't possible, then that's where we're going to be. And I think that would be horrible because there's people's livelihoods and jobs that are on the line. Also, the vast, vast majority of Rhode Islanders have done exactly the right thing. And they should be rewarded for their compliance and not punished because of the minority that refuses to own their shared responsibility to the people of Rhode Island and do the right thing so we can all get through this. Now, many of you may ask, why is this happening in the states? And I have been honest with you from the minute this started, so I'll be honest with you now. We're not sure. We don't really know. No one really knows. But here's what I do know. I, I will tell you the facts. 11 out of 15 states, including our own state, where mask wearing is mandated, have seen continued decline in cases. That's just a fact. I'm just telling you the facts. States that have a mandate around mask wearing and higher compliance of mask wearing are doing better and continue to see decline in cases, including in our own state. We also know, because we look at this every day, there's a correlation between the amount of testing, the um, availability of testing, and the amount of contact tracing and how the virus is progressing. So here in Rhode Island, uh, we have a very aggressive testing approach, the most aggressive in America, and we're gonna keep it that way. In fact, we're gonna double down and do more testing and a very disciplined contact tracing effort. The other day I was asked, how do you know the contact tracing is working? Well, I would say the proof is in the pudding. We haven't had a surge. We haven't had an outbreak that we can't control. And I would just ask everyone out there again, if you haven't downloaded the Crush COVID RI app, now's a good time to do it. There's 50,000 of us who have done it, and I'm asking everyone to do it. We don't want to wind up in a mess again. If you've been getting a little lax or lazy with your contact tracing notebook, 
I'm asking you to buckle down, and myself included, my family included, take a minute every night to write down who you were with. Because if you get sick, we need to see that notebook, and we need to immediately contact everyone you've been in close contact with in, you know, in the week before. That is the way to fight this virus. We, right now, we have a winning formula in Rhode Island, and, I, and I, I'm asking you, the people of Rhode Island, to come together and stick with the formula so we can continue to open our economy and do so safely. And I uh, will tell you, many other states are beginning to halt their economic reopening. Governors who had said we're moving forward to phase are saying, hold on a minute. I'm not there with, uh, with Rhode Island because we continue to see good numbers. But it is a, it is, it is a really eye-opening to look at how quickly this picture can change. So I think we need to approach this virus with a sense of humility and recognize that um, it's here and if we need to follow the rules so it doesn't overtake us, which could happen in a week or two or three. Uh, so I'm putting that out there and I'm asking Rhode Island to continue, even though it's summer, even though we're outside, even though our cases are reduced, even though we're getting back to normal, it is more important than ever to follow these rules. Uh, okay, with that, I would, uh, having said all of that, we're still moving forward towards phase three. Um, I'd like to be back up here on Monday with, you know, an official announcement about phase three. And so I'm, I'm trying to give a sense of what phase three will look like, and I'd like to go through a few topics now. I promised I would be back this week with an update around sports. Obviously, sports are, I think, athletics are an important part of our lives all the time. Good for our mental health, good for agility, teamwork, being with people, um, but especially so in summer. I know, a lot of, I know a lot of kids sleep in their Little League uniform the night before the first game, and it's a big part of what summer is. And so I, it's important to me, um, as a governor, as a mother, as someone who's played sports my whole life, to do everything I can to get, get kids back out safely. So, um, to that end, uh, we are, I'm announcing the following updates for both youth and adult sports for Phase 3. In Phase 3, for youth and adult sports, we are going to be allowing no contact and low contact sports games to be played between stable groups with no limit on overall group size. So that's, a, that's huge, that's great. Until now, we've, we've set only scrimmages or technical, you know, drills and such. But once we get into phase three, uh, you'll be able to play in stable groups against teams with no limit on the overall group size. What does a stable group mean? A stable group means you have the same players and coaches together over the course of the summer. Same group of players and coaches together over the course of the summer. Why does that matter? That matters a lot. Because if somebody gets sick, we want to contain it to that stable group. No contact and low contact sports is baseball, softball, tennis, golf. Um, games can be played if, once we go into phase three between teams within Rhode Island as well as outside of Rhode Island, provided that there is no stay-at-home order or other travel restrictions in the state that the other team comes from. In phase three, we're also going to be allowing spectators at these games. However, we suggest that there's no more than two spectators per player to keep the crowds down and spectators are required to wear masks. Um, we're encouraging players to wear masks when practical. Having said that, I recognize that that's often not practical and so we're asking players to keep a six foot distance from one another um, use common sense, avoid contact, do not go play if you are sick at all, and just, you know, 